Hi, this is Eric. I am the Grey Goat, and this is the Grey Goat Garage, packed full of loving goodness here. Um, today we're going to install a three-quarter inch bore torque converter onto this Tau Tau 196cc clone engine. Um, you'll notice the torque converter kit comes with metric hardware. So if you have a Predator engine or a Tillinson or Ducar, you'll want to pick up the correct SAE hardware. We have that at OMB Warehouse. Um, it'll be in the torque converter section. I'll, I'll post a link when I post this video up. Um, so you'll need the correct hardware if you're using something that's not metric tapped around the four holes around the crank and the crank itself. So this is a metric engine, so we're going to use metric hardware for it. So <clears throat> when you open the torque converter kit, you're going to see a lot of parts. And you're going you're gonna to ask, say to yourself, oh my gosh, Look at all these parts. And like I tell my children, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So we're gonna take this one bite at a time. Our kits come with two sprockets. One sprocket is for 40 and 420 chain. Nobody uses 41 chain because 41 is the same tensile strength as 35 and doesn't make any sense. Um, I like 420 chain. It's the same um, size as 41. It's twice as strong and not, doesn't have as wide of links as four, number 40 chain. So we're gonna, this bike that this engine goes on uses 420 chain, so we're gonna use the 10 tube sprocket. The 12 tube sprocket for 35 chain, we're not gonna use. So there's our first bite out of the elephant. So what we have here is we have the cover, we have the mounting plate, we have four small bolts that attach the cover to the mounting plate. We have four bolts here that'll mount this plate to the engine. So we've got two different clutches here. We've got what's called a driven clutch, which is gonna ride on the secondary shaft. We have, And we have the drive clutch, which is on the, the, the crankshaft. So this is what we call a driver. This is what we call a driven. So with the driven unit, we have the shaft, a key that's gonna lock everything in place, we're going to use the 10 tooth sprocket for 420 chain. We have one washer that has a step in it for the key. One washer that's going to go with the lock nut at the end of the shaft and our belt. This is in order of how this is installed onto the crankshaft. You've got the, uh, a heavy steel bushing. You've got what we call the stationary sheave or the, the flat sided pulley. We have an idle bushing that goes on here that allows the belt to roll over this pulley. We have a hub, and this is the, the weight assembly with the springs, and this expands outward with centrifugal force, and these touch on the inside of the outside driven drum. So there's the belt side for this, and here's the, the driven side that goes against those weights like that. You're gonna notice there's some black stuff in here. That is a dry Molly lubricant. It's also in here. This helps everything slide. We don't wanna use any liquid lubricants on this because it'll fly off and get on your belt. Then we have a stepped bushing that goes onto the end of the crank and then a bolt that goes through that stepped bushing. So <clears throat> let's get this installed on the engine and um, we'll, we'll show you how everything happens. You can pre-install the shaft if you want. Slide the threaded end of the shaft through the plate first. It will be a snug fit going through the bearings and you'll notice there's a snap ring on the back. That's gonna come into play later because that's important. So now we can install the key, <clears throat> the washer that has the cutout Our sprocket, and it doesn't matter, this is a equal sprocket on either side, so it doesn't matter how it goes on as long as it indexes with the key. <clears throat> We're gonna slip our driven clutch on. We're gonna install the washer, and we'll take the lock nut all the way down till we start getting into the plastic locking part of that. Okay, so now we're gonna take our four shorter bolts 
and mount this to the engine. You're going to notice on this engine, and this is common with a lot of these engines, that the, the back hub on the plate will hit the dipstick or, or the oil fill plug. So what I did was I simply took and cut off the top of this oil fill plug to clear the bearing hub on the back of the plate. So um, we're just going to put this back in and just get it snug. You don't have to tighten the guts out of it. We don't want to wreck the, the O-ring on there. So, okay, so now our plate will fit against the engine and you'll notice I'm already on the riser plate that's lifting the engine and moving it forward. So on the Coleman bikes, you don't have to cut your frame because we don't like cutting frames. So we're going to get our bolts started into the side cover. And one thing I want to do is I want to make sure that these bolts are going all the way in by hand first. I don't want to take and just catch one thread and then get crazy with it. And I'll show you what can happen. These are the bolts for the Predator engine. The M8 1.25 bolts and the 5 24 bolts are very similar. You can almost catch a full thread and then it'll stop. That's when everybody takes the impact and just jams this in there and cross threads it, messes up the threads, breaks the bolt. Um, you don't want that, you don't need that. So we're just gonna use the impact gun just to snug these up. Just to speed things up a little bit. And then for you sticklers, we're going to torque these to 17 foot pounds. Okay, so now we've got everything started. Now we're ready to assemble the driver unit. The first part we're going to do is put the heavy steel bushing onto the crank, followed by the stationary sheave with the bronze bushing on it. Now at this point, I would have you look at the alignment of these two pulleys. I can tell that these two pulleys are not in alignment right now. So I need to space these out. Um, we, we have bushings at OMB Warehouse that we use. So I'm going to put on one of these shims, check the alignment. Nope, it's going to need another one. So we're going to put on two shims. Those are 50 thousandths each, so a hundred thousandths. Now those belts, those inner, inner pulleys are aligned perfectly. That's going to help your belt live longer too. So now that we have that, then we can put the belt on. The belt has two distinct sides. One side has an angle to it or a bevel. The other side is nearly flat. The flat side goes towards the engine, okay? So what we're gonna do is just get this belt started around the driven unit. I'm gonna move it up over the crank. I'm just gonna give it a squeeze there and push it up over the bronze bushing. So now we can install the rest of the driver unit. We've got a hub that has four ears on it. This hub is sometimes can get hung up into this. We want to make sure that it slides freely through here. So, but there's two distinct different sides. This side has two flats milled in it, and those flats are going to index with the outer drum. Okay, so this side that has no flats in it, that's going to go towards the stationary sheave. <clears throat> Then we can assemble the movable sheave or the angled pulley. It doesn't go like this. The pulley has to ride on the belt. So we're gonna
there we go we're going to just put that on there then we're going to index the outside drum to that hub this washer this stepped heavy stepped washer indexes uh, with the the hub and then we're going to get this tightened down it's also a good idea to use loctite don't use um, blue loctite or use the medium strength loctite on this bolt here um, because this is something that you'll have to take back apart when you're ready to change a belt so don't forget to tighten this down and when we tighten this all we're doing is removing any end play from this shaft if you go too tight or jump on this with an impact wrench you can pop the snap ring off the back of that shaft and that won't be great for you okay so there's zero end-to-end -end side play on this shaft we'll tighten this nut down now we've got four smaller the four tiny bolts and the cover the cover just goes on like this and line up the bolts and put the bolts in in the holes but you're going to notice there's no place for the chain to come through well you because this is a universal application you need to cut a hole in here um, you can use a jigsaw you can use a razor blade uh, i use tin snips and just cut out the hole for the chain you know figure out where the chain's coming through and that's all there is to it so it, it's a easy unit to install once you wrap your head around the parts and you know like, like like i said how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time so just take it one one process at a time and you'll be fine i am eric i am the great goat and we're powered by ombwarehouse.com thank you